Hey guys, Wolf here. Um, so, bit of an update before I start. Um, I recorded a whole 15 minute video, but I got a new mic and I totally forgot to change my OBS settings. And, <laughs> um, so I have an entire video of just the game and no audio whatsoever, which sucks because this game, you gotta read out stuff. And so I'm just gonna, I deleted that file and I'm going to just explain what happened before I load up. Basically, we met this dude on the walk who was like all huddled up and he um was alone he, he was going the way we came like he was going towards the way we came from and Bemelay wanted to take him with us but I chose the option of um letting him walk off his own dis uh, his own direction Mostly because he was going the wrong way, like he wasn't going the direction of us. And um, the guide already told us it was really dangerous for us to have him with us since we only had like two lights and four people. Or it would have been four people. Um, so I let him go off in his own direction. He probably died. Um, then we found three of the walker thingies, whatever they were called, uh, on the bridge. Uh, we didn't want to get rid of the lantern, so the guide threw basically a Molotov cocktail at them, and uh, now we're running through the flames, hoping that the bridge don't fall b below us. And yeah, that's right about where we're at now. I'm going to load up the save. As you can see, it says today's date, uh, because I did it today, and I'm just going to make a second video. Um... Alright, so we stayed on the guide's heels, almost too close for comfort. If he stops abruptly, we'll all crash into one another, maybe even fall off the bridge. Then the world tilts, and I- I- wait, what? It tilts? I was mid-stride when I finally- when I- when I put my foot down, the bridge isn't where it was. It lurches to one side, either because it was weakened or pushed. Bemele and I manage to keep our ground, uh, as does the guide. He presses on without even bothering to see if we're, we were able to follow. Bemele growls in frustration as we push to keep up with the guide's pace. As our storm of the feet, un our feet thunder across the boards, a silver sliver begins to rise into view just above the edge of the wa water. It's the island. The island? I squint and suddenly make out the craggy, craggy, the craggy forms of land and earth. I see it. We're almost there. Safety at long last in sight. New energy surges through me. We push ourselves faster, lo longing to push these godforsaken bridges behind our backs. All at once, the bridge ends. Our entire group rushes ashore. Earth, solid earth, a haven from the water. I catch my breath while still moving even further away from the dark shoreline. I can't believe we actually made it. Even more difficult is the idea that we were only halfway done. The night falls once more and we have to do it all again. Or when night falls once more, we have to do it all again. I still don't understand why they have to cross at night. Maybe explained in the beginning and I just don't remember, but that's just... Ugh. Heavy arms fall across my shoulders, when I and I straighten to see Bemelay smiling wearily at me. Good work out there. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> it's not the usual com commendation of a job well done. There's sadness, perhaps even sympathy, in the in the sentence. It ends flatly. I think that said flatly. Um, with a sigh, he leans his head to the side, having it rest slightly against mine. 
Usually, Bemily's comfort and good nature gives me at least the, the urge to smile, but right now it feels like a hollow victory. Bes despite still having the comfort of one another, we were incapable of doing any true good. We were only able to save ourselves. A quiet moment passes us passes between us. And then the guide is there. He moves so smoothly that his steps on the soft sand are nearly silent, and his dusky clothes blend with the thinning of the, of the night. The sun will rise soon. The fire on the bridge is the only reason this island isn't overrun with prowlers right now. However, they could still pose a threat. Bamale levels an empty look towards the guide. Is there something we should do? Come. Why didn't he say that? I didn't double click, I don't think. The guide takes us to an area a bit further inland, but not too far from the water. Trees partially obscure our location, and there's enough room to watch the coast in the case in case prowlers start to emerge from the water. Essentially, it's a place where an ambush would be hard. If any of you see anything at all, speak up. We don't want them to sneak up on us. Well, no shit. Almost automatically, each member of the group turns to a different direction. As the sky continues to fade from from pale purple... <laughs> God. <laughs> As the sky continues to fade from pale purple to a muted blue, the waters stay silent. For the first time, nothing happens. It's a miracle. Suddenly, my chest is lighter and the air is fresher. The first pricks of light appear over the horizon, stinging my eyes after such a long journey through the darkness. Um... The, oh, I already said that. A sound catches my attention and I move to focus toward... I move my focus towards its direction. The guide is opening a latch, opening opening the latch on his lantern again. He gently, almost respectfully, blows out the light. That was me drinking coffee, in case you heard that. Not sure if you did. We no longer have to worry about the Nixie. It is over for today. Yay! Hmm. That's interesting. Alright, sorry, I was answering a text. Uh, I'm almost unable to keep tears the tears of relief from pouring out at those words. We made it through the night. We survived. No one feels the need to speak. We look at each other, an understanding passing between us. Then we find our own space as ca as comfortable as we can get and lie down for the rest. Uh, for the rest, we weren't Wait, what? And lie down for the rest we weren't sure would ever come. Okay. Sorry, my brain did not read that right. Dots. My eyes slowly blink open and readjust to the brightness. What little there is. The sun is obscured by a thick layer of fog, making it impossible to estimate the time of day. I prop up my elbows and push myself up. The ground is hard and rocky, but it isn't the only reason I'm eager to get on my feet. I check my surroundings, the harsh craggy earth, craggy again, I don't know what that word is, but I'm guessing it means like unstable or like uh, bumpy, I guess. Craggy earth of the island is interlaced with twisting vines and gnarled branches. Beside me, Bemele is fast asleep. The guide, however, is nowhere to be seen. I realize that I don't recall seeing him lay down with everyone. It's likely he left us hours ago. There's a creeping silence here. I can't help but shudder at the hollow, aching feeling inside of me. It refuses to relent. I shift my weight back and forth, unsure of what to do with myself. I doubt he left you. He probably is just making sure no friggin' prowlers or whatever they're called uh, 
emerge. Memories of last night's harrowing journey flicker through my mind. Plus, you can't go off the island, because supposedly you can only cross the bridges at night. Bemele walks sudden, wait, wakes suddenly, raising with alarm. My mouth opens, then shuts. After a moment of fumbling, a word Hello. finally escapes. Hello! Me! <laughs> Bimele gives me a gentle smile and makes his way over to me. Morning. Or, I highly doubt it's morning. It's probably like afternoon or evening. A pocket of quiet descends over us. Bimele sighs. The atmosphere is weighing on him already. We should eat something soon. Eat what? Did you bring yes. something? Oh, hey, look! A distant rustling of the leaves around of the leaves around catches my attention. Shouldn't it be rustling around of the leaves? Oh well, whatever. The guide appears, emerging from the thicket. Bemele glares at him and makes his way over. The Nixie will not tread on land in daylight. However, being near the shoreline is still dangerous. If you leave the center of the island, remain cautious. Okay. Before the sun sets, I will be in this area. It would be wise to meet me here before nightfall. Why do you do this? I sharply turn towards Bemele as he snarls and confronts the guy. Do what? Oh my gosh, no way. New Cinema, Cinema Sense video came out. <laughs> um... If you would just let him follow behind us. If you had been there before. None of this would have happened. That's definitely not true. They didn't have to die. Yes, they did. Probably. The guide looks away, seemingly unaffected. Of course he's unaffected. He's probably been doing this for years. He has, like, no emotions. He's a sociopath. For good reason. Because if a lot of people die on your trips, you don't want to be attached to them. If all you're going to do is leave everyone to be lost, then why bother guiding us at all? Despite Bemily's severe words, the guide apparently considers his piece here finished. He turns towards the forested area from which he came. Hmm. Uh, Wait. Do -do -do -do. Bemily calls out to the guy reaching towards him. Before he can make contact, I quickly place a hand on his shoulder. He lowers his arm to his side, though I can still feel wrath emanating from him. Is that how you spell emanating? Dang, I've been spelling it wrong for a long time. We stay this way until the guy disappears from view. Bemily begins to kick at the ground, spraying tiny pieces Bemily, of gravel I know about. Angry, but regardless of our feelings, we need the guide. If he leaves us, we'll all die. And yes. we've done so well with him? Yes. I gave him a cold glance. We won't even know the wait, which bridge to take without the guide. Ben Malay knows that. This needs to stop. There are people counting on us to make it back. We can't afford to lose our way. Mm-hmm. Shoot, my coffee's cooling down already. That sucks. The anger etched into his expression fades into sadness. I can't stay here right now. Um, you kind of have to. It's a small island. Quietly, I speak. Shoot. Um. Um. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I don't know what to pick. Um. Uh, this one. Dang it. Doesn't take him long to- Oh, shoot, I forgot to read those. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm getting a call. Oh, oh, oh no. Uh... Um... Um, give me a second.
Okay, uh, didn't take him long to notice I'm there. He slows his pace so I can easily catch up. Uh, we fall into step for a while, neither of us speaking. Eventually, we come to a thick stand of trees and wordlessly weave our way through the branches. Once we're hidden by the foliage, Bimali leans against the tree trunk, head hung low. Negativity radiates off of him. I don't know what I should say. Fortunately, he breaks the I silence. I apologize for back there. I nod firmly. His reply isn't unexpected. For for as long as I've known Bimele, he has had a tendency to let his temper flare, then regret it later after processing his thoughts. I know that <laughs> dealing with these sorts of situations calmly is part of the job. Oh shoot! It's fifteen minutes. All right, I I'm gonna tell myself everything is fine or that none of it matters. I'm gonna see if this is gonna be the last thing he says because I want to stop the video here. Sure, I can feel something without it being anger. But I've not figured that out either. Okay, rather than speak, I try to listen as supportively as I can while Bemelay continues to argue with himself. Alright, I'm going to end the video here. So sorry um, for the whole mix-up with no video for the last recording. Kind of sucks because some very interesting stuff happened with that guy that definitely has some things to do with this video. But I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.